As we uh, enter into the fourth sermon of the I Am Portraits of Jesus sermon series, uh, uh, what we have before us is, is Jesus is still battling with the religious leaders uh, of the day about his power and his authority that he used to open the eyes of the blind man back in chapter 9. So, so we go we go that far back. They're still arguing about that. The religious leaders they they're, they're kind of divided uh, amongst themselves. You know, is Jesus a bad man? Is is Jesus demon possessed, or or could Jesus actually be uh, from God? In our text, Jesus responds by comparing and contrasting the differences between a good shepherd uh, and a hired hand. In John uh, chapter 10, beginning with verse 11 through 18. Before we get into that this morning, I want to show you a, a, a news clip that uh, I know you saw on the uh, uh, news week before last about the little girl who, who fell into the, uh, the water. The, the sea lion came up and grabbed her and pulled her into the water. Take a look at this. Uh, at this point. That's why in my email I sent out the, 
uh, yesterday, I, I think it was, that uh, you know, if you wanted to be uh, up to speed with it this morning, we'll, we'll go to Ezekiel 34 and read that chapter. Go to the 23rd Psalm and read that again uh, for yourself. Uh, and, and so you can kind of learn a little bit about the uh, Old Testament overtones of shepherding. Uh, that is the backdrop for our passage this morning. For John in his writing, uh, he uses that for uh, the Pharisees to understand what he is talking about here. And actually helps us as well uh, understand Jesus' comparison. So let me speak to uh, about Ezekiel 34 in a little bit more uh, depth than I did last week when I just kind of referred to it. Uh, Ezekiel 34 is a, a lengthy and concentrated reflection on shepherding. Uh, in it, Israel's false shepherds are proven to be uncaring, uh, self-serving, and actually no shepherds at all. God accused them in Ezekiel 34, verse 2, of not feeding the sheep. Uh, they have not strengthened the weak, nor have they healed the sick, uh, or bound up the injured. They have not brought back the strays, nor have they searched for the lost. But they have ruled them with force and harshness. And for that reason, the sheep scattered and became food for all the wild animals uh, in the area. And what God is, is telling Ezekiel to prof prophesy against the shepherds of Israel is that whether sheep or people, uh, if they are not fed, they will leave. If they're not cared for, they will go astray. If they are not nurtured, they will look for nourishment from another source in another place. The wild animals who consumed the lost sheep of Israel were the many false gods of the ancient world. Uh, they were the many religions that offered false hope and anything else that seemed to, to offer some kind of, of relief uh, uh, for their present struggle. You know, we, we see that today as well. Uh, uh, when people are not cared for, they'll leave. Uh, they'll search for something else. To satisfy their needs, their wants, and their desires. We, it, it happens in marriages at a rapid pace in our world today. It happens in, in families. It, it happens in churches. It happens in communities. As a result, God promises in, in Ezekiel 34, verse 31, or verse 30 and 31, God promises to be both uh, the shepherd and to set a model shepherd over the people. So according to God, the clear definition of a shepherd's task is, is to feed the sheep adequately, uh, to care for their elements, to keep them gathered together in the fold, to put uh, their well-being before uh, their, uh, his own, the shepherd's own, uh, much like the man who jumped in the water to save the little girl. Such a model of shepherding uh, might require the laying down of one's life, uh, as noted in the connection with uh, the boy Samuel, uh, I mean the boy David, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, when, when he was wanting to, to serve the king. And he said, now you're too young, but this is what uh, David said, the boy David uh, said. He said, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took the lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. Now understand that, that after David had experienced life, he reflected uh, back on these shepherding years and found a correlation uh, in his walk with God. And that's when David wrote Psalm 23, the one that we know so well. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Uh, he leads me on the right paths uh, for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the, the darkest valley, uh, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Uh, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup uh, overflows. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Folks, with this perception, think about this now. Ezekiel 34, uh, Psalm 23. Uh, with this perception of, of a shepherding God, knowing that God would set another shepherd like David over Israel, Jesus stood among the scribes and the Pharisees, of, among the people uh, in the temple that day, and he used the I am language of Yahweh, the holy God of Israel, and, and he said, I am uh, the good shepherd. I am the owner of the sheep. I am no hired hand. The hired hand is only concerned with monetary gain. Uh, uh, only it expends the minimal amount of uh, energy to take care uh, of the sheep. Will not, will not risk life and limb for the sake of the sheep. No, I am the good shepherd, he says. If you look at the, the parables of the lost in Luke 15, Jesus says, uh, I would leave the 99 and go search for that one lost one until I find it. And when I find it, I would, I would gather it up in my arms and I would hold them tight. Uh, I would heal their hurts and, and uh, restore them to the fold. I would love them to, despite their faults and their failures, uh, despite their filth from the places that they've been, the things that they've got them things into, I would, I would restore them and wash them as white as snow. And you know, and since we have just come through the Lenten season and, and the Easter season, uh, if you question uh, the Good Shepherd's love, uh, let me just remind you what the Good Shepherd would do. Let me tell you how far the Good Shepherd would go for you. The Good Shepherd says, if it means saving my sheep, I would let the world spit on me. I would let the world curse me to my face. I would let them flog me unmercifully. I would let them put a crown of thorns on my head. I would let them march me up a hill called the skull, carrying my own cross. I would let them drive nails through my feet and my hands. And if it means saving my sheep, I would stay on that cross until it was finished. For I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Paul wrote uh, to the Roman church, Romans 5 8. God proves his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still in our field, while we were still full of ourselves and, and, and disregard our neighbor, while we, we were still living an immoral lifestyle, while we were still chasing after the false gods of our, our world, while we were still looking for love in all the wrong places, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, died uh, for me and for you. Folks, there's not a hired hand in the world that would do that. And yet time and time again, uh, we chased after the, the hired hand types and follow the hired hand types. Uh, and we chase after the riches of the world uh, that, the, that the world has to offer so that we might satisfy our selfish desires for the moment. But Jesus said in verse 14 of our text, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. That means that Jesus knows us inside and out. Knows our, our every longing, our deepest desires, our every thought. And if we truly know the good shepherd, uh, then he lives within us by way of the Holy Spirit that we celebrate today on this Pentecost Sunday, and, and our actions, listen to this, our actions will, will equal the level of that relationship. For we are known by our fruit. Matthew 7, 20. Let me, let me close this morning with Jesus' words from John 10, 16. Jesus says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. That means Jesus' love goes beyond the present moment. Goes beyond John's community with which John writes to here. Uh, 
It goes even beyond our church doors today. So my question for you this morning is, who are they? Where are they? And how can we reach them and bring them into the fold? How can we reach them and bring them into the fold? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. And we thank you for the model of the good shepherd. That somehow, someway, uh, we might uh, kind of fulfill that role for someone in this community. Guide us and lead us, O oh God. So that we can accomplish great things for the glory of God. 